All right, so obviously when we look at the substrate itself, not the filter media, we get all sorts of crazy little life forms. It looks like we have some sort of little rotifer or maybe stenter uh, down on this piece of algae. You can also make out all the different kinds of algae and uh, fungi. You can also see all the little proteists and the worms and all sorts of stuff that are living in here including uh, baby brine shrimp eggs that didn't hatch uh, from feeding uh, here it looks like a, a little um, uh, cyclops that has passed away and I mean just the layers of life within even just one cubic millimeter of material on a slide is incredible you can see all sorts of life right here and if we go in 400 times zoom that's 200 times zoom uh, we're gonna see even more life and more diversity and this is from uh, the five-year-old tank by the way so uh, I just wanted to show you guys this uh, stay tuned for upcoming episodes if this is what you're into if you want to know about how filtration actually works and what's going on in your tanks uh, right now, then this video should shed quite a bit of light. Looks like we have another uh, little crustacean exoskeleton there, as well as all sorts of little teeny life forms cruising around. And if we change the aperture, uh, I get a feeling that we're going to see, yes, even more little creatures in this tiny, not even a full drop of water that was put on here. So, Come back for more or check out my live streams where we dig through different tanks if you're into this. But back to the filters. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Alexander Williamson here with the secret history of living in your aquarium. So obviously what we're going to be doing in this episode is taking a close examination at filter floss or filter media under the microscope at 200 times and 400 times magnification. So over the years I've looked at the aquarium through the microscope hundreds and hundreds of times I've looked at all sorts of different things and what's always interest me are the little creatures that you find everywhere welcome everybody I hope you're having a good day today we're gonna to be looking at the impact of age and seasoning in an aquarium on filter media and specifically acrylic filter floss so we're looking at my tanks this is one of them that's been set up for three years or more and we'll be looking at a number of tanks including some that are extremely overgrown with life and others that have a sandy bottom with no active substrate but to make this as fair of a comparison as possible I tried to find tanks that aren't like the two of these in comparison where one is completely blocked out the light with growth on top and it's very thick with growth we're looking for tanks that are somewhat similar but that are the different ages using the same filtration system which is why I have been running hang off the back filters for a number of tanks now this one has bigger fish but it's also more gallons so that's something to consider that I kind of adjusted for in other tanks, we have uh, a certain amount of age on the tank and a good amount of fish, and we're going to be looking at the filter floss. So I've popped the top off, and the filter floss has started to dry out. And to make it fair, I wanted to show you guys, this is a little puffball of new filter floss. This is the stuff I'm talking about. The older stuff and where we're taking our samples from is going to be below the water level, so right under here. And we're going to be doing that in all of the tanks we're looking at tonight. Now, we have samples that range all the way from a few weeks old all the way up to about seven-year-old substrate and a five-year-old aquarium as far as the water that's been in it and the life that's been in it plant-wise and fish-wise. However, we also have this tank which will be included and I think will be interesting because this tank is only three or four months old now but it was jump cycled by using filter floss from an old aquarium and so we took that out put in new filter floss for all these hang off the back filters which are all either marine lands or fluval 30s to 50s and we are cutting a snippet of that filter floss under the water level 
to see what it is that they're doing as water's passing through there. Now we know that all of these tanks have very clear water. All of these tanks have zero ammonia and nitrites, and all of them have very low nitrates. Uh, near undetectable in every single one of the six we're looking at. So let's go look at the samples. All right, so if you're curious about each tank and the water, and when we get a little bit of plant material and a little bit of substrate and a bunch of algae off the side, and all of that mixed together, including the open water, then you're gonna wanna watch the next video I put out on the biomes that live in each of these tanks. But for now, what we're looking at are a, I took a cut of about a cubic millimeter and then I cut that into thirds. So this is about the size we'll be looking at. It's pretty close if you look at a pen, a ballpoint pen, it's pretty close to the size of three or four grains of rice. Now, before we put it under the microscope, I will be chopping these up, but I wanted to show you the samples and I'm gonna try to divide them where it makes sense. So there's a little bit of each element in it, but our samples go from two weeks old here, two week old filter floss that's just been running in a new tank to a three month old filter floss running in a tank to the, uh, lovely <laughs> five year old filter floss here. Then what we're gonna be doing is switching it out and uh, these are the next samples which also will be trimmed before we look at them. And we'll be looking at, uh, let's go back in order. So we'll be looking at a one year old and a three year old sample. And already you can kind of see the difference in coloration and mulm. So clearly these samples, uh, these older samples here are collecting a lot more mulm, moss or algae, whatever it may be. Uh, whereas the newer ones, and this is the interesting one, that last one, which is a three month or four month old tank, but it was seeded with water and substrate and uh, filter media from the tank that is older right here. So what we're gonna be looking at is gonna vary and we need to pay close attention to what it does when you jumpstart a tank. So let's get at it. All right guys, so as fun as it is to look at all those little microfauna, the little microorganisms and animals that are crawling around all over a well-seasoned aquarium. And by season tank, let's clear this up too. I have an entire video going over the details of the difference between a season tank and a cycle tank. And I'll link that down below uh, and also add a card on the, at the end of this video if you wanna watch that also. But the difference basically is that a cycled tank, it's been running a few weeks or you've added filter media that's old and it has been enough to colonize uh, the other filter media in your new tank and your ammonia is at zero, your nitrites are at zero and your nitrates are low and growing, but you'll control those uh, if you understand the nitrogen cycle by either doing water changes or pulling out plants and so forth. So what we're really trying to get at in this video is what is the structure of that filter floss looking like? So in all these tanks, the filter floss is only two weeks old. It's brand new filter floss to control for that. So if you're like me, when you do water changes, oftentimes you'll wring out the filter floss and throw it back in. You'll wash it out in some tank water that's non-chlorinated or dechlorinated water, and then you're done. You move it and uh, ta-da, your tank's good to go again. Well, I wanted to look at what is actually colonizing these and if it makes a difference on the age of the tank and the water and the diversity of the whole tank on what accumulates in just two weeks without a water change or anything, two weeks in an aquarium. So we've got a range of different ages, which you saw, and a range of different aquariums. And I want you guys to pay close attention to what is there, what isn't there. There aren't a ton of the little creatures there. There is a ton of bacteria, uh, of fungi, and other things, and that landscape changes vastly with time. And so I'm hoping we can draw some conclusions from that, or at least the reasoning I've done and all the years of doing this, as well as the last few weeks of taking samples every few weeks and looking at samples from different tanks and taking the tank parameters, that 
I have a pretty good foundation now of what's going on with these filter flosses and filter media that aren't a hard uh, ceramic base or aren't uh, the bottom substrate of a tank or a sponge at the bottom of a hang off the back filter. That's a whole other ecosystem which we'll be examining again in the future soon. But for now, let's get back in there and take a look with all these things in mind and what it means for some of the, the common misconceptions and some of the myths that may be true, but some of the things that were taught uh, by word of mouth in the hobby and on various YouTube channels about filter media and how to use it and what it can do and what it can't do and what's going on on the surface level. So let's get back in there and let's pull all that apart and look at it up close. All right, everybody, so here we are looking under the scope, 200 times magnification, and I must confess that I've been doing this for weeks and weeks, well, years and years off and on, but weeks and weeks testing all of my tanks. Here we have a two-week-old sample, and you can see that it's catching uh, big debris, actually pieces of duckweed, moss, and what we're seeing is the same kind of little microorganisms that live in a cycled tank substrate are starting to actually grow here because it's where the junk is. You're not seeing in a new tank that's a couple weeks old all that stuff in the substrate yet. You might see a little bit of fish poop, but all those microorganisms are really concentrated in there. The other thing I want you to notice is this is one species of algae that we're seeing, and it's all over. So it's going to start to spread via this filter. You see the, the helical swirls that it has? Uh, and this two-week filter, also notice how smooth the filaments are um, on all of this. There's not much growing on it. There's little creatures swimming in between, but the colonies of uh, denitrifying uh, bacteria and the stuff that breaks down the ammonia and the nitrite and the nitrates is only starting to grow on a few of the strands. Most of it, not so much. Now, if we jump right over to the uh, the uh, three month slide again, we still see that the little creatures uh, like paramecium uh, and some simple worms and things, maybe some nematodes that break things down. Are, are in this slide. And actually what's kind of interesting, uh, I just saw it jumping around, is we have a little Daphnia, or not a Daphnia, but a Cyclops uh, living in here. And the Cyclops is uh, scooting around and she's pregnant, so maybe we'll catch a shot of her. But again, you see more Paramecium, the kind of oval-shaped guys, and you see moss and big chunks of stuff stuck in here. So we do see a change in that there's uh, actually uh, a little more diversity. Here's like a worm eating something in here too. Um, just munching away on stuff, a detritus worm. And there goes a little uh, stenter uh, that eats things as well. Um, but again, the uh, algae is going to be that same slimy, sticky type uh, that drives everyone insane uh, that's often in new tanks. And here, let's see, can we catch that? Can we catch her with her babies, uh, with her eggs? One moment, folks. All right, guys, so here we have, uh, if we can catch her again, she's escaping very quickly. So here we have, uh, we just saw her swimming by again, but uh, my point is, uh, we have a little Cyclops, and she is full of eggs and swimming around, doing her thing. But this provides food as the tank is new, and a lot of the substrate won't have all this food in it in the form of debris yet. However, we're not really seeing surfaces that are extremely well developed uh, for growth of the the bacterial colonies. Now, we're seeing her swim by again uh, underneath some layers. Uh, and she's pretty cool looking, so hold on a moment, we'll get a good shot of her. Alright, so here she is. You can see all her eggs behind her trailing. And she's moving quick. She doesn't like the light. So, in any case, uh, that's some fish food though. That's a Cyclops female that has lots of eggs on her. Uh, so let's move to the one-year-old sample. And here is where we really start to see some changes first going on. We start to see... 
yeah, there's more of the little critters breaking things down. You can see the fish poo. You can see some kind of scales of a, a leaf that's still breaking down. And again, the uh, filaments are pretty smooth, but they're starting to show some growth on them. You see there's some fungal growth on these ones here. And up here, we're starting to get these bigger clumps uh, and colonies that actually, like here's some fungi uh, growing on this one here. And then uh, down here, uh, as we change the depth of focus, you still see there's things uh, like little worms and paramecium's, little little uh, critters in here, uh, protease. But the amount of them, they're one, they're getting smaller. They're smaller creatures, and two, uh, the diversity has gone up, which is kind of interesting. So these guys will be leaving the filter soon and going to actually join. Uh, the substrate where it, over time substrate becomes the area where all this stuff is your filter is no longer that spot so here we can see a, a type of algae um, that's the the hair algae that's breaking down and uh, we've seen black uh, beard algae and some red algae and also some free-floating green water algae is around too so we've got probably four or five types of algae by this point which really shows the the diversity there's that uh sticky kind too but by this point they start competing and it makes it so no one algae is taking it all over now here's where our tanks really hit their stride this is where they're full of all sorts of diversity and you know what all the little critters that are in there even though the filter floss looks muddier murkier and dirtier as it gets older you're only seeing the very, very teeny, teeny, tiny things, um, little teeny life forms. But what we are seeing is that the filter floss is getting kind of twisted, tangled in this three-year-old sample. And we can see lots of different types of algae. And these little helpers that are breaking things down are only what's needed because you're actually getting these big sheets of biofilms and this, these are called aufuchs and they're a combination of fungi, archaea, bacteria and this is you can see the fibers holding them together when you look into different depths of them you can see algae growing in them oftentimes cyanobacteria too and it becomes hard to even see the filaments in some cases the ones that stick up they still may be pretty clean but they're all pulled together pretty tightly also which then means that your water chemistry is what's actually getting treated by the filter at this age. So this is when things really hit their stride and, and you're actually getting those bacteria growing in big numbers. Uh, and it's once your tank has kind of hit equilibrium. So when we hop over to five years old, again, we've got a few tiny little life forms doing their thing, but we have an even tighter clump of everything uh, in the tank. We see uh, that there's even more of the mulm that's being turned into these bio layers. And pretty soon you end up with these thick uh, plaques of colonies, these aufuchs, uh that hold together. You can see there's uh, that filament is just covered and the filaments start to get a lot more texture to them. And that's actually bacteria and fungi. There's some fungi right here that is taking over and holding place, whereas all those little uh, things that break down all the food and organic matter, it's not as needed. These are needed to break down things to their elemental and molecular level. And actually, like this fungi here, and there's some black beard algae, but there's definitely fungi, those the hairy stuff, the little the fiberglass looking stuff and this stuff that is where all your bacteria is going to be and so you can easily see where a stone or uh you know ceramic beads would be much better for growing um bacteria covered surfaces and also what happens here is you may not be inoculating your tank with food for your fish with these older tanks past three years up into the five six seven years but their substrate is going to be even richer than any of the tanks. So you can still take um, samples of water and mulm out of their substrate, and that's going to be very rich. 
because it starts breaking it down outside of the system of the filter. Hang off the back filter becomes uh, more specialized, and yeah, you still get some pieces of debris and stuff, but very quickly it gets broken down on a chemical, molecular, uh, and even in some cases uh, atomic level where the minerals and things get utilized and then concentrated in these colonies of bacteria uh, or archaea or algae or cyanobacteria and then they, when they die it returns it to the system in forms that are able to be utilized which is ultimately what we want to see. So lastly though, let's take a last look at what it looks like when we jump start a tank and when we jump start a tank what we're going to notice is that uh, we get algae. We get algae clots and we get cyanobacteria um, because there's nothing to compete with it. So it's actually not a great idea to jumpstart a tank with only a one-year-old tank for the sake of algae and all this growth here. And also there's, uh, there's blackbeard algae in there and there's these, uh, these little hairs of dead algae. Plus, there's some uh, fungal growth, but we, we're not seeing those mats of the brown stuff. We're seeing uh, photo um, stuff that uses light, basically, uh, stuff that has chlorophyll in it. Uh, there's a brine shrimp egg or cyst, and um, not much life, honestly, not much of the little life forms because we used an older tank. So basically... We, uh, we spiked it with two types, three types of algae, and those can take over a tank pretty quickly. But fortunately, we did spike it also when we did that. We did infuse it or inoculate it with some of those little plaques that start to take up texture on the filament. Uh, but really, a more effective way to do it would to be use the bio beads. And if you want the life forms for your fish that are little critters, uh, get the mulm out of the substrate and so forth, and then uh, you'll have a better time with that, whereas um, it takes some time for this to truly mature, and uh, if you don't already have a whole tank that's starting to be balanced and has the the right food for the right critters, things get out of whack. It's, it becomes an alien environment to what you just inoculated with. So really you want to inoculate with a, either a very well seasoned and diverse tank or if you do a new tank you better be ready for the algae. If you if you seasoned with a tank under say a year or two old it doesn't have that diversity, it doesn't have these layers and plaques uh, that will grow on filter floss in just two weeks. So I hope this has given you guys some insight what's going on in our aquaria and if you enjoyed this i'd love a thumbs up pass it on to anybody that you think could uh, get some informational use out of this and i'd love to hear from you guys does this match your experiences what other info can you plug into these results that really this is the fifth or sixth time i've seen the same kind of curve of life spiking the, the little critters spiking in population and then dwindling down and more of the slime layers coming out which we'd need a stronger microscope to to see if you want me to get that stronger microscope you can always support the channel as a member for a buck 99 or now there's a new feature down below where you can donate a couple bucks uh to a video that you really like so if you enjoyed it great i hope we've got new subscribers or current subscribers sticking around if not Sorry to waste your time. Don't know why you're still here. <laughs> but regardless, I hope you're all doing well. And I'll see you next time. And you have a great week. Bye, guys.